Thanks for joining us here today at Frederick's Restaurant here in Islington. Um, we're here today to have the final press conference for our show that takes place at the Copper Box Arena, the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park in Stratford, London, on Saturday, the 21st of September. Uh, the show features uh, some cracking fights. There are six title fights on the bill, plus uh, some great fights on the undercard featuring some of the best young talent in the country. Um, the main event features the British and Commonwealth Middleweight Championships uh, between Billy Joe Saunders from Hatfield and John Ryder from here in Islington. Uh, both undefeated. Looks like on paper to be a cracking fight. Looks like the type of fight that the fans will get great pleasure from. I certainly will watching it. And uh, I think we're going to get a special, special fight with that one. We also have on the card the vacant European Heavyweight Championship between Derek Chisora of Finchley and Edwin, <coughs> sorry, Edmund Gerber from Schwerin in Germany. Um, this is the vacant title as I said. Um, from my point of view, being Derek's manager as well as his promoter, it's a fight that he cannot afford to slip up on. This is the fight that I hope will get him into more or less reaching dis distance of getting another crack at the world title. So he's got to be focused on that. I know that Edmund has uh, got other ideas, certainly uh, he's not coming here with his manager Hagen Dury to uh, just make up the numbers. They've asked for this fight and uh, it's a fight that they've got in the game and it's going to be a crack of the <coughs> We also have the British and Commonwealth Wellaway Championships between Frankie Gavin and David Barnes. Uh, Frankie Gavin is undefeated today. Um, he's really turned the corner as far as uh, his career is concerned, really focusing. And I think he's going to go on to some really good things, provided he gets past the former two-time champion, David Barnes. We've also got the vacant WBO Intercontinental Super Flyweight Championship between Paul Butler uh, of Liverpool, who's a British and Commonwealth champion, 12-0, against Miguel Gonzalez from Santiago in Chile, who's also undefeated with 16 wins and no losses. Um, I think Paul Butler's uh, going to be one of the best young fighters that we've seen in this country for a number of years. I really do think he's got the talent, the aptitude, he's got all the tools to take him to the very top and uh, hopefully he will come through and prove him right down the road. We've also got the Commonwealth and Vacant WBO Inter International Super Featherweight Challenge between the undefeated Liam Walsh from Cromer in, uh, in uh, up north. Norfolk, I think it is, Cromer, against Joe Murray, who's undefeated, who comes from Manchester. Again, two undefeated fighters. So we've got the best fight and the best at their levels, and uh, the fans are going to be in for a super night with that, with those title fights. On the undercard, we've also got the vacant Southern Area Super Featherweight Championship between Mitchell, Sh Mitchell Smith and Scott Moses. <coughs> Frank Bullioni will be on the card, uh, also Bradley Ski. Georgie King will be making his debut. He sold more tickets than any other fighter on the card. He's up to 700 now, so he'll be able to retire after his first fight. Thank you. It's Lincoln's own Georgie King. That's what we're yeah. uh, Also on the card, we've got Josh, Le Josh Leather, the 2012 ABA lightweight champion, making his professional debut. So all in all, fantastic nights nice boxing. Tickets have really gone well. It's going to be televised by Fox Nation. It's sponsored by Nemiroff Vodka and Rain and Steel. We thank them for their, their support. And uh, we're looking forward, as I say, to a fantastic night of boxing. You know, all the people are here are pressed to ask the questions they need to do so. So please go ahead. Hello. How many fans here in Lincoln keep that belt? If you want to win it outright, at home first, outright before I move on. Um, me and Frank sat down, we talked about where we're going and everything's going in the right direction for me so far. But it's really important for me to win this bet outright and uh, it's a big step up for me on Saturday night against John. And uh, I know it's, it's going it's to be staying at home the right place for me forever. So you'll need another defence for you? One more after John Saturday, yeah. And I'll win it outright. I understand you've been training with James Dickel. We've had a couple of new rounds here, it's a good smile. You think we're all right, haven't you? Yeah, we're very good. Billy, you know, last fight you beat Gary O'Sullivan, who was world well ranked by the WBO. Do you think John's a big step up from that, though? 
Listen, I think we're all, you've got all of us now, we're all on, you know, there's British level and there's world level. And I think, you know, Johnny's coming up, he's British level, but I know that I'm world level. Now, yet to be proven, I know, but, uh, you know, I'm sure on the way that, you know, a few more defence of this, a few more learning fights, and I'm going to prove that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm world level before, you know, my age. I'm only 24, just turned, so I've got loads of time. And, uh, yeah. I think he's a, he's a step up, he's a better, I reckon he's a little bit better, better opposition uh, than Gary O'Sullivan, but I think I'll better deal with him on the night. Uh, then, uh, George, what made you turn pro? Um, I just think now that I'm 22, I've, I've fully matured. And I feel that like I've got my man strength, so you know, I've, I've always had a close style, so you know, I think it's the right time. And um, you know, me and my dad and, and the people close to me have sat down and, and we spoke about it and we all thought it was the right time together. So you know, I guess I wonder what, I thought you might go back into the ABAs. Yeah, you know, you can fall into that cycle of going in the ABAs and the ABAs all the time. And to be honest, I, I didn't really have that international style. So, you know, it, it, if I did get to international level like that, maybe, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have been, been a hit in, in them tournaments. So, I know I'll be a lot better as a pro anyway. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so have you looked at Ed Edmund sort of to sign for this fight with your thoughts on Yes, we looked at a couple of rounds of this fight, him and Michael Sproul, which was a great fight. Um, you know what, uh, I, I have to say thank you to the man for flying down here. It's going to be a great fight. We're going to make it rocking in there, so I uh, can't wait. Are you going to be able to ride this fight? This is going to be quick. I'm going, to, I'm going to be the lightest ever since I was born. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you look as if you've been really working hard last few weeks. What are you going to get down to? Aren't you going to be under 17 stone? That's the aim. Uh, You'll be surprised when we jump on the scales on Friday. So, uh, you know what? Uh, it's a. Uh, it's going to be amazing. The whole show uh, with Frank, what Frank has done, it's going to be amazing. Um, you know, winning this European title last time I was robbed of it. And uh, I'm going to win this fight in style, so uh, I'm excited and just look, look forward to watching the fight. I'm going to ask Edmund, I mean, I don't want to denigrate Michael Scott, but he's getting on a bit. What happened on that night? He's only defeat. I think most fighters don't, don't, you don't, we disagree with this, like you, if someone fights somebody and you have to phone them, how is he and stuff like that. Fighters fight different ways, so uh, I didn't speak to Michael Sport. Actually, me and Michael Sport don't talk anyway, so uh, I don't need to call him. I don't talk to most fighters in this heavyweight division because it's just the way I am. In case you fight him one day? No, we'll speak after when we both retire that we can have a cup of tea or something like that, but for now, I don't talk to none of them. Are you looking beyond this fight? Frank's talked about this could put you on, on the brink of another world title shot. No, you, no. You no, can't no. afford to think about that, can you really? Not at all. You know, I gave the interview the other day saying, you know what, the world title fight, am I interested in it now? Not really, because the Klitschko's are making it so as a... Uh, it's 
the way the whole, the way they approach the whole thing of giving you a world title shot is like they've done you a favor by really and truly they're just like uh, slaving you and uh, I'm not into those kind of games no more. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward for this European type fight with this guy here. Um, you know, that's my own big, my, my biggest challenge right now in front of me. So uh, I'm looking forward to this fight. Really talking about world titles, um, you've a bit to go yet, but how far away do you think you are from that sort of level? You know, I'm still at the British level, you know, I'm fighting British fighters. Um, once I win this outright, I mean, it's up to Frank Warren and his team, you know, they've guided me well so far. I've had the right fights, you know, it's not like I'm ducking anybody at the weight, and either everyone wants to fight for the British title at, at middleweight, they're welcome to. You know, I've got a, um, I think there's a few middleweights at the minute, this, this, just took a step back. They know that I'm um, obviously this fight and one more fight away from winning this out, right? And uh, I think there's a few middleweights now deciding in the trees a little bit, waiting for me to vacate this. But you know, I'll have to sit down once I win this, uh, right, and speak to Frank and see where he thinks, you know, where we head and what route we take, and uh, we'll go from there. You, you worked with Darren Barker before, haven't you? Yeah, I've, I've sparred Darren, um, I think, twice since I've been pro. Um, Real, real, real class, class act, uh, nice fella, um, and done really well to win that uh, world title the uh, a few weeks back. Just more, uh, you know, it's more, it's more satisfying to know the world titles in England, even though I'm a bit off that yet. But you know, it, it's here in England. It's not in America. You haven't got to travel for it if you did get your shot or something like that. And I'm sure that Dan and I'll run to it for a bit as well. You know, he's, he's a good fighter. Um, how, how much does it inspire you? What do you think? Yeah, good. I mean, listen. He showed that you know you can go abroad, you know, and, and dig hard enough. You know what you can come back with, and um, I think he's, uh, I think he showed that you know you, you can go abroad to America and, and the other countries and come back with a title. But you just got to have that fight in it. How's your training gone? Perfect. Everything perfect. Um, training's gone well. Sparring's gone well. You know, I couldn't wish for a much better camp than what I've had. Everything's gone spot on. And um, come Saturday night, I'll show you all what I'm about. John, you were just following up with Gary as well, wasn't you? Saying you could probably come from the same side as well. Yeah, not just to the fight, but over the years we've done loads of rounds together. Derek, um, you've dropped weight. Is this for just this fight, or you're thinking two, three fights in advance? This could be a new, like, lean, lean machine. No, I dropped weight because I bought a new suit, that's why. I had to fit in it. Bought the suit, bought the suit for sale. <laughs> on sale, so I figured out. He if bought I bought Frank. If I put away, it's not going to fit, so I'd say let me put a new suit on, so I, and that's why I dropped weight. No, I'm joking. You know, I dropped weight because I want to I look good and I want to fight. I want to bring entertain. I want to bring excitement to the ring for myself and for my fans. So, uh, you know, I could do a lot. You know, you know, my trainers taught me a lot, which I haven't started doing in, as well in the ring. But now, I like, shed more weight off. So many punches will be coming off now. The ability of being speed and that's what that's what was needed and uh you know, it dropped his last fight was a uh, line of simple time for two years and it's gonna be uh, hopefully a better last one ever so it looks mm. to be good to be a good good night for to see Derek for me it'd be good to see him at his best because I don't think we've seen him at his best and he's been in with the best we give him all good fights. Frank, how excited are you about the box? Um, you um, yeah, I'm really pleased. You know, it's what uh, the Olympics is all about, giving London a legacy of venues. And we're putting on the, the first uh, boxing event there, so we're christening it. We're a great show, and it'll be a regular, a regular venue for us. The next one will be either the 30th of November or the 7th of December, 7th of December, depending on how the guys come through on Saturday. It'll be regular boxing there, and the atmosphere will be fabulous. It's really you know, it, it, it's like a, a large version of your call. You're on top of the action, 
got a bad seat in the house. And uh, so I think that I think we're going in for a treat. Boxing starts at five o'clock. So we've got I think it's 12 or 13 fights on the card, so uh, it's going to be a long night, but uh, hopefully uh, you enjoy it. You got any more questions? Derek, your domestic fight from around for a couple of weeks with Tyson Fury is every day. First of all, who did you do after three nights from the fight? Yeah, it's a great fight, the rest of the fight. Um, I wouldn't pay pay per view for it. So, uh, if uh, I always said, if Tyson boxes, he'll win it. But if he mixes it up, he's going to get knocked out. And uh, if Tyson gets knocked out, his family's going to jump in the ring, so there'll be no conflict. So I'll put my money on that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll put my money on that. It's a great fight, anyway. Why do you think that Tyson, the boxer, if he mixes it, will get knocked down? Uh, Tyson, the fighter, if he mixes it, will get knocked down? Oh, because David can hit in his career, he can hit, so, uh, you know, Tyson can box. But can he sustain the uh, fitness of boxing and skip away from David? So you think he's got to stay behind the jab? He has to stay behind the jab. If he tries to slide it in and stuff like that. Like, like rather than maybe going to stay with you. Yeah, basically, yeah. So what do you think will happen? Let's talk about this show. <laughs> we worry about that show. We're on about Saturday. That's what we're here for. We've got a great show on Saturday. Where that happens next week. He's available after the fight to talk about it. We've got a good show. We've got six good fights. Six good time fights on. Fantastic baby. Any more questions on the uh, on the show? We're all done? Thanks very much. We'll do the one-to-ones, they're all here, they're all focused.